Hi friends! Today we're diving back into Melt Cosmetics palettes, but I wanted to showcase these specifically because without a doubt, 27 and Rust are my two favorite Melt Cosmetic eyeshadow palette, but I do want to decide on my ultimate favorite after this video. I already have an idea of what it is, and I'm sure you do too, but we're still going to use both anyway. I do have individual videos showcasing both palettes with the swatches. Do I have an individual video for 27? Probably not. I'm so sorry. I'm a liar. We won't do all the swatches. We might showcase a few shades, which I think are just gorgeous from each palette respectively. I'll apply 27 on this side, rust on this one, and we'll cover what I love about each palette in terms of the color story, the inspiration, and all that stuff. And at the end decide which is my favorite out of these two favorites. So if you would like to join me on this adventure, then please make yourself comfortable. And if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia, an online coach and flexibility specialist, as well as loving to teach body weight strength. I teach online, I teach live, I do all the movement things, but I also love to teach and speak about beauty. So if it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And with the intro out the way, why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> That's enough. All makeup will be listed down below if you are wondering what I have on my face. You might see a few surprises down there. I did go to Sephora and I didn't want to, but you know what? I like to go shopping every couple of weeks because if I go to Sephora all the time, it just numbs me out and I lose the excitement for makeup shopping anymore. And I had mentioned in my May favorites that I was more than content with what I already have, enjoying the products that I've been applying all month. But of course, it's it happens. I stroll in and my dopamine gets lit up by the, the prospect of buying something new. The items that I bought, however, were on my radar. So they weren't random splurges. And of course, you will see what those items are down below. I'm still deciding on one of them. Don't know what I feel about it yet. But anyway, I want to do a separate video covering those products, but it's time to get into these palettes. Now, 27 released before Rust, but when Rust came into the picture, this had amazing response from the beauty community because I had discussed the inconsistencies that are found in Melt Cosmetic eyeshadow palettes. Uh, Gemini was their first one, 27 released soon after. And there were a few that were like, the color story is amazing. Amazing. Mel Cosmetics just puts the grungy filter on any color story they encounter. But the quality was hit or miss depending on the palette. A lot of people lost faith in Mel. It's like, I don't want to buy eyeshadow palette from Mel Cosmetics anymore. Rust, however, Rust hit it out of the park, especially the metallics. The metallic texture is one that I feel Melt has issues with in terms of it being too flaky, not adhering to the lids well. The metallics found in Rust have better adherence, smoother texture. This is Tarnish, for instance. Nice, beautiful shine. You can see and just how smooth it is, right? That didn't happen with a lot of, of Melt metallics. Redox is another one. There's a little more powderiness to Redox, but again, problem solved if you just pick up less and spend a little time smoothing it out. Jumping into 27, just so you can see what I'm talking about in terms of texture, I'm hopping into Crime Fighter. Crime Fighter is lighter. It doesn't have the same oomph as the metallics found in Rust. Now, I forgave this because of the color, but also just that light glow effect that this texture has on the lids. I'm swatching again, just so you can see the shade better. I know it's not as robust in texture and shine as the metallics found in Rust, but what I love most about 27 are the colors of the mattes. But anyway, let me go back to Rust because I'm jumping around as I knew I would. Rust has mustard, just grungy browns, the warm tones here. I think one of their better color stories because sometimes, and this has happened, where Milk Cosmetics has like two beiges that are very similar, hard to decipher on the lid, and they could have replaced that one shade with another shade that I would 
think will make the color story a lot more comprehensive. Russ, I think, does a fantastic job of having the light shade. You have the two medium shades, but at least they're different colors. So if you wanted to go the peach route, you could, but if you wanted to go more mustard yellow, you got that color. And then we venture into like the more medium deep tones that you can wear solo or to deepen your eye look. Here we have rubbish. It's like, ooh, your mustard tone brown. But then you have rust, which is more of your red tone brown. Then we get into the deeper shades, okay? These are gonna give you intensity and smoke like no other, but you have a choice, right? You got the more red tone smoke here and you have like that deep, dark bark neutral brown that probably translates more well let's see here on the swatch i was gonna say black yeah it's like a rich dark brown like a more black than brown like a black brown i would say but again, you have choices here among the matte shades. They're a little more wide in terms of the different colors and the tones and the intensities. With the three metallic shades, I think they align well with the matte. As I previously showed, you have Tarnish, which is more of your golden bronze. You have Redox, which is your rusty red bronze. And lastly, you have Ravage. Ravage very much lines up with the darkest matte here. This is like your deep chocolate bronzy type of a tone. It's gorgeous. And what I feel what makes Rust so appealing is again, just a better delivery of different shades and undertones, but still in that Rust category of things in terms of color story, but grungier. So we'll get into those looks in a minute. I have to hop into 27 because 27's mattes, I can't really pinpoint why I love this so much. I had said in my terracotta blush video, if you haven't seen it, I will put it up in the card up above and also post a link for it down below. That earth clay tone, I think is just stunning, especially now for the summer season. I would argue great all year round, but that's just me. These two shades specifically get me the most. One more thing and thick. One more thing looks cool in the pan, but it actually has a, I can't even explain it. The way it applies on my eyes, it doesn't look the same like it does in the swatch. And every time I apply that shade, I'm like, what is happening? This is so gorgeous. Thick, I don't wanna say it's not a mauve. It's not a mauve, it's like a desaturated plum. Let me head over to Melt's website because they might have, well, I'm sure they will have, a much better shade description than what I'm doing. Rosy mauve, okay, I was gonna say mauve because I have a picture of what mauve is in my head, but my intuition, I should have stuck to it, man. Thick is considered to be a rosy mauve. One more thing, the one I first watched is described as a warm taupe. That's exactly what it is. Naked Sleep is described to be an apricot blend. Downtown is a baked clay. Nip Slip, a peach shade. Moxie, a burnt orange. Crime Fighter, copper foil with some pink and glitter in there. Vegas Past, a bold bronze with some rose gold reflex. Whiskey Neat, aged brown. Apricot maroon, mauve, rosy taupe. Those are all shades that I adore. And to have them in one palette with these different intensities and color changes, like you have one that's more orange, one that's more mauve, I adore that. I think that's why I love 27 so much but when i look at rust i'm like man i love those tones as well so let's get in to the looks i have my linda eye primer on both lids again 27 here rust here what shall we begin with fam i know you're thinking just going to rubbish first yes i would say if you have rust and you're not using it rubbish is a great shade to go in solo all over crease and lid maybe tap a little bit of tarnish on there or maybe you go in with either of these first. Let's do Erode, see how that looks. Now Melt Mattes pack a lot of punch, they pack a lot of color on the first dip. Sometimes I just like to tap it on instead of swirl and twirl so I could get nice adherence. They describe Erode to be an intense apricot. So I think we're taking on more of the yellow part 
of an apricot because there is one in 27 that's described as an apricot, but I think more like the pink part of the apricot spectrum. Hot apricot nude is what they describe again, naked sleep to be, so why not? Let's tap that on this side. Making sure if you're using the same brush that you wipe it to get the pigments off the bristles so you can have a true representation of what the color looks like on the skin. Now this is kind of like my skin tone. There's a little bit of like that pink hue, probably hard to detect on camera, but this will be a one and done shade for me. If I just wanted to blank out my lid, maybe add the deeper shades, one of the deeper ones here on my lash line, tap one of the metallics here on the lid, because there is a little bit of color there, I do love the hue. I think it's lovely. This, a little more vibrant, as you see. Definitely more yellow part of the apricot spectrum. This is more of the apricot pinkish beigey tone. We could go in with Rust or Mar on this side, and Rust is described to be a deep terracotta matte with a rich red undertone. Hmm, now I could apply that to erode. That might look or lean a little orange, Maybe if I go in with Rubbish, Rubbish is the Ultra Matte Dijon Mustard Color, which when it came out in the stack, I mean, people use the heck out of that. Let's do Rubbish instead. Let's see how that will go with Erode. I'm taking my Refer number one brush. That's a shader, but it's flat on both sides. I like to use this type of a design to tap the color on the outer part of my lid first, just to have a little bit of control. Why not, let's place it here on the inner part of the eye. So that is how the shade looks. Even though Rubbish and Erode are similar in terms of intensity, I would consider these to be like medium type shades that you could wear solo or use maybe to create a transition, but Rubbish just has such great color to it. You can immediately detect more of that mustard tone. And I think when paired with the apricot yellow, it looks quite lovely, I should say. Now we hop back into 27. What can we pair Naked Sleep with? I'm looking at Downtown. Now again, I'm hopping into Downtown's description again because I think it will look so well with the apricot. Let's see here. Baked Clay. Big clay. So tapping into downtown, totally different hue than what we saw from Rubbish. In the same manner, with the same brush, I'm, I'm tapping that shade onto the outer part of the lid. Now this won't have the same uh, depth as, let's say, Moonchild or Whiskey Neat from 27, but I do love the color. Again, just that toasted clay terracotta tone is just it's my favorite it's my favorite taking a little bit of naked sleep on the edges you know just to whisk and blend and i'll take downtown here right on the lower lash line because i love that hazy look you know anytime we're dealing with melt shadows they love that lower lash line haze i mean that grungy like dead sick look is <laughs> something i think melt embraces with their aesthetic and you most certainly can achieve it with these eyeshadow palettes. You can stop right here. Again, I love how this looks. 27, but then we have the Mustard Love from Rust. Ooh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Let's apply one more shade. This time I'll go a little deeper. Let's start with Mar. I think Mar will be a nice pair with what's going on here. And I'm placing just a little bit on the outer part of the lash line. I don't want to cover the outer lid because I like how Erode and Rubbish are the focus of the eye here in terms of the matte shades. However, I think Mar provides a nice contrast introducing this deeper shade just to the lash line. I don't want to extend it out too far. Just a little flick out. Yeah, does that work? Does that look okay? That's not too bad. It's not a disaster. I could be better at this. I just have to practice. I just choose not to. What was I saying about not flicking it out too far? Oops, definitely want to go in with Tarnish. I think this is an appropriate shade to pair with the mats we have on the lid already. So I'm gonna gently tap that with my finger 
on the place of my lid that doesn't have a lot of color. It was kind of left blank on purpose because I knew I wanted to go in with one of the metallic shades. I'm lightly tapping. Now, if you want a more precise application, then I would recommend you grab a smaller shader brush and can better carve that color in and under your crease if you don't want it to travel too high. You can also grab more to cover the rest of the lid in a, in a pull down type of a fashion and then blend away some that travel too high up, okay? Okay, now for this side, I can go in with Whiskey Neat or Moonchild. I'm gonna go in with Moonchild. Moonchild is the maroon and I'm tapping that in the same fashion on the other side. Now on this side, very lightly here on the outer part of my lid. Now Moonchild, I feel can give a little more for sure because there's a limitation in terms of the deeper shades in 27 where like it's obviously darker than the previous mattes I applied, but I would like it to be a little more just so it could have better contrast against the other shades. Now, what I might have to do is maybe apply Moonchild solo because perhaps applying the shade over the other mattes takes away the intensity and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Let's take Crime Fighter, the copper foil shade on the inner part of the lid as well as the center mobile lid. And I'm tapping here. And again, I understand these are not as impressive as the metallics that exist in rust, but the softness and still glow you get from the shadow I think is lovely. It's the perfect amount that doesn't overwhelm the eye. It's just gorgeous. For inner corner, we didn't get into that. I will use classic. This is the matte beige from Rust and I'll apply that on the inner part of this eye, but I'll go back in with a little bit of erode so that can be a cleaner transition. And on this side, I'll apply Vegas Past, which is a golden bronze, and I'm pulling it not only from my inner corner, but also the lower inner lash line. All right, let's apply some lashes and I'll be right back. Here are a few wide shots of the final looks. On the lashes, I have Chandelier Luxe Lashes in the style Lumiere. And I quite love both. I think they have great potential to be used as daily looks with a little bit of smoke, with a little bit of personality in terms of us relying on shades, that you're not your typical tan brown, brown neutral brown, that although they're not super impactful, I think the color and the tone makes it more interesting, which is why I love to reach for melt palettes sometimes to shake up what I sometimes can get in a neutral brown rut. So this is what we have, again, from 27, what we have from Rust. I can appreciate both yellow mustard leaning, more mauve terracotta on this side, but let's get more intense, yes? Yeah? So we'll take this off, perhaps dive into the more medium, deep, deep shades from each palette and see what we come up with. So let me take this off and I'll be back here in a minute. Round two, let's do it as promised. Diving into the deeper shades here. I'll begin with the Rust palette and we'll just begin with the Rust shade. This is my Bristles Beauty ED01. I like it because it's a little stiffer than some of my blenders and I find using a stiffer brush with melt mattes is optimal because they do need a little more push as they're very pigmented and I feel this type of a brush ideally spreads the color evenly across my lids. So Rust is gonna bring in great color right away, a lot deeper than Rubbish. I think a great shade to wear as a one and done eye look if you wanted to dust this across the crease, bring some on the lid and a little bit here on the outer part of the eye. You can pair that with a liner or maybe tap on a light metallic color on the lid if you wanted. And let's do rust here on the lower lash line. Going in with thick now from 27. I think this is uh, an appropriate equivalent to rust. Rust definitely you see there's more red here. With thick, rosy mauve. Rosy mauve, can there be a better combination? I don't know. Applying this in the same manner I did 
with Russ mostly throwing it through the crease, taking it out a little bit from the corner. Got a little messy there, all good. As I like to do, again, have my concealer brush on standby, I did not evenly apply my primer. I can see that the, the borders of where it stopped are showing themselves, and I'm not crazy about that. So that was a little careless on my part, my apologies, but the colors though, amazing. So here we have the rosy mauve tone from 27, the more red burnt tone from Rust here. Yeah, yeah. And as promised, going into the deep, deep shade. So I think Rot 2, Rot Squared, right here is what we'll go in with next grabbing my refer one again and be careful make sure to tap your brush before you apply the shade on your lid because you will risk fallout and these deeper shades are more challenging to brush off already made up face skin cheeks you don't want to get the streaks i tapped it first on the outer lid and then i take the leftover here flicking it out and also bringing it in. I think in an appropriate time to use my smaller coidal brush just to clean up the edges here and to create a finer shape. I don't wanna bring rot squared all the way through my lower lash line. I primarily wanna keep it here on the outer quarter so it can match up to what's happening on the top part of my eye. And as always, I have my little blender here on standby to buff up the color that got away. Yeah, so I think that's good. Brushing a little more here upwards using circular motions, very light on the brush. Yes, we don't want to over manipulate the skin, don't want it to move a ton, primarily moving the color. Okay, okay. Now on this side, Let's go in with Whiskey Neat. Whiskey Neat, I think, nice to go in with thick. Again, not going to have the same level of intensity as you see here with rot number two. You could probably identify that by now. I'm tapping in quite a bit of color and it's just not, it's not giving the same. So I'm gonna tap in Moonchild. Let's go in with Moonchild and that will help bump up the intensity a little bit more. But as I'd mentioned before, probably better if I applied Moonchild first to create more smoke, but it's all good. I think this is still a lovely color. I do recognize the limitations, especially if you're deeper than me, that you love these shades from 27, but you're like, Alicia, I really can't smoke it up with Whiskey Neat and Moonchild alone. Definitely overdid it on this side, but the pounce, pounce, pounce will help us get everything back in check. All right, just a first look at the mattes by themselves. Again, you have 27. Definitely more smoke from the last look, but not as much as you see here from Rust. This is the advantage Rust presents with Rot being in the palette, it's gonna give you more smoke, more grunge. You can use this solo, you could pair this with any of the other mattes in the palette. And again, it's just gonna give you that level of intensity that I think 27 just doesn't have. You could apply a dark brown liner first, blend it out on the outer lid, and then apply either Whiskey Neat or Moonchild to get a little more depth there. If you don't feel like taking that step, I totally understand, but I still love the tones. You know, it's great that I can still wear this out during the day, even at night, if I chose to. With some lashes, I think you'll spice up the, the level of evening flair if you will. Now to go super smoky from Russ, I can apply Ravage. That's gonna smoke it up quickly or introduce another color by applying Redox. A Hodo brush, a little bit of Redox, mostly on the portion that doesn't have any shade. Now this is the softer of the metallic. It takes on a similar texture to what exists in 27. So I'm taking my finger instead, but I did have some casualties there. Let me whisk away a little bit of that. Uh, uh, uh. But in order to get nice stick, I used my finger and there you have the shade 
returning to my refer brush because I want to clean up this application where don't want the sparklies to travel too high, but just want to take them a little closer to the crease area. And be careful with picking up too much. This shadow is so soft. It's very easy to pick up too much with the brush. And then of course, you will have the leftover falling in no time. <laughs> you see that little copper, got a copper streak there <laughs> because I picked up too much of redox, it's okay. We're gonna make it, we're gonna survive. Tarnish on the inner part of the lower lash line, as well as, you know, why not on the majority of the inner corner. And you can take a little bit of Ravage, I mean a little bit, and tap it on the border between Redox and Rot Squared to have a cleaner transition there. On this side, well, you know, we did Crime Fighter on the lid. Why don't we go in with Vegas Past? Definitely using my finger and placing that shade on the remainder of my mobile lid and some on the inner corner. Taking it toward Moonchild here. I did still get a little bit of fallout, no worries. Not as crazy as what I had experienced on the rust side for sure. Now Crime Fighter on the inner and also Let's pull it a little longer here. On the lash line meeting with the matte shade. And I'll take Vegas Pass around the inner corner just to wrap it around, complete the application. All right, lash is time and I'll be right back. Here are some final shots of round two. And I think we can agree that they're totally different despite the shades existing in the warm realm. I know they're not particularly colorful, like let's say the Cleona and Emily Violet Marie collaboration palette or even other existing melt palettes in the brand. But what I admire most about these two is just the ease of use, the unique tones that exist in both. But I think you can probably decide which one is my ultimate favorite. Without a doubt. I love 27. It's my favorite melt palette. I know it has its limitations. I understand that. I think I identified them during the demo. I still love Rust though. Rust is high up there for sure. And you're wondering like, what about Gemini, Alicia? Gemini 2. Gemini's fantastic. You can't go wrong with mustard moss tones, okay? All day, every day. But there's just an ease of use with 27 but a uniqueness about it at the same time. Even though you would consider these shades safe in terms of the, the warm, the burnt oranges, the apricots, the rosy mauves, I get that. But it just seems that every time I apply these shades, no matter the combination, it delivers just a beautifully toasted look to my eyes. And pairing the palette with my terracotta blushes and all that, I love the final look, the feel, the vibe of it all. I can't get enough of 27. And every time I use it, despite it being a neutral palette, it's exciting to me because I think this goes beyond neutral. It challenges the notion of neutral. It's a little more than your neutral brown, a little more than your tan brown. Again, venturing into the pink apricot tones, the rosy mauve tones, the maroon decay. It's all in here. All my favorite shades in one palette. And when I look at Rust, Again, can't go wrong with the bronzes and the, like the red tone rust colors. Those are favorites for everyone. The mustard browns, rubbish, forget it. All day, every day. 27 is still my favorite. Even with this demo, as much fun as I had with rust. Again, understanding that I would say more comprehensive in terms of the matte and metallics and the tones. Rust covers a great range of different intensities and shades in the palette. Whereas 27, a little more limited, but I still think they did a phenomenal job with expanding this color story specifically. I mean, the different nuances that exist amongst the mattes alone is extraordinary and I can't get enough. I don't know what Melt will come out with next. I'm not sure if they'll come out with another 27 like they did with Gemini and coming out with Gemini 2. I still prefer this over Gemini 2. Gemini 2 is beautiful. I had it as a favorite in my April's video. I love the desaturated rosy red tones in there for sure. 
but the more rosy mauve, kind of like burnt peach terracotta part of the spectrum that I feel is in 27, I much prefer over the rosier red tones in Gemini too. So that is it fam. Although this was kind of like a showdown between both melt palettes, I also just wanted to provide a little bit of inspiration if you have either palette, if you haven't used them in a while, to dive back in, maybe rekindle your love for them. Hopefully the love still exists. I hope. Let me know what your favorite melt palette is down below. I'll see you down in those comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial melt eyeshadow palette extravaganza or monthly faves. Take care and I will see you again soon.